This is the OnePlus Open, and for a company's first attempt at a foldable, it does a lot of things right. Which is great because OnePlus making a foldable is kind of a big deal. You see, the US market, unlike, say, China, doesn't have much competition in the space. Sure, Samsung are pioneering folding phones to decent commercial success, but then we have entries like the Pixel Fold and the Moto Razr that aren't really putting a dent in the market. However, I gotta say, after trying the OnePlus Open for a little over two weeks now, I think that there's a lot going for it. A recurring theme with this OnePlus Open is that it's clear to me that the company spent a lot of time minimizing the compromises between a traditional smartphone and one that actually folds. You experience this firsthand just by looking at the cover display, which is actually at a usable aspect ratio, unlike something like the Fold 5, which can be a bit narrow and restricting. Also, just like a traditional flagship smartphone, this one has top-level specs as well well. A Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 SoC will give you plenty of performance for games and whatever you want to do, but it also has 16 gigs of RAM so that you can multitask to your heart's content and keep a lot of apps open, which you will need because the software is also pretty cool, though we'll get to that later in the video. And on top of all of that, I just like the design of this thing. It feels pretty sleek in the hands, especially in the context of a foldable, but especially when opened up, it gets pretty thin. What is unsightly, however, is the back of the phone, particularly with this huge camera bump, which is certainly not going to be many people's taste, though I do see what they're going for, and to the eye, it actually looks really premium, kind of akin to a high-end watch. I say that like I collect high-end watches, which I don't. Apart from the design and performance, a neat little quirk that I I found on this device that I haven't seen in a smartphone in quite a while is an IR blaster. Actually using this device as a living room companion to not only cast to my TV but also control it has been really neat. So thanks OnePlus for including a feature that only 10% of us would actually use but is still awesome nonetheless. In the time that I've spent using the Open, I've been finding that it does a handful of things better than my Galaxy Z Fold 5. One of the biggest things that stood out to me that I think a lot of you guys will appreciate if you've been holding out for a folding phone is that this one is the first one that I've tried that has a minimal crease to it. Like you have to be feeling out for it or looking at it in weird lighting, but even then it's very, very faint. On top of that, both the main screen and the cover display get very bright, especially in sunlight. We're talking 2800 nits, which is way over the 1850 that you get on the Z Fold 5. It has a little bit of a matte slash satin finish to it, which does a good job of keeping reflections down to a minimum, but it also doesn't detract from the color or contrast like other matte displays would. All in all, the main display looks amazing, especially while reading or watching content or playing games. Also, we'll get to durability a little later in the video, but OnePlus does mention that through independent testing, the Open is rated for about 1 million folds, or about 10 years of use at 100 folds per day, which is an insane number and is something that we certainly can't test right now, but if we're to take their word for it, holy shit. Something else that the OnePlus Open does better than my Z Fold 5 is that the battery life is kind of insane on this thing. It's equipped with a 4800 milliamp hour battery, which is 400 more than the one on the Z Fold, which translates to over two days of use, at least in my testing. And even for the more power intensive days where it won't exactly hit that, the fact that it has 67 watt charging with the included power brick is also equally nuts. On top of that, when it comes to cameras, the ones on the Fold 5 are decent, but I'll say that the OnePlus Open has impressed me in a way that I wasn't expecting. Where the Z Fold has a 50 megapixel main camera and the rest are kinda whatever, OnePlus's mentality with the Open is to give you what is essentially three 
main cameras. There's a 48 megapixel main sensor, which looks very good, especially in low light. It actually has pixel stacking tech from Sony, which gives you one inch sensor performance in terms of detail and dynamic range, but in a smaller form factor that fits in a thin phone. There's also a 48 megapixel ultra wide, which gets plenty sharp, but I think what impresses me the most is this 3X periscope lens. It's 64 megapixels in resolution, which means that you also get 6X lossless digital zoom, and it works surprisingly well. All this to say, no matter what the focal length you shoot at, all of the photos look awesome. And I especially love the skin tone when you're taking shots of people. Though, just keep in mind, I think video recording could use a little bit of work and probably an even bigger issue than that, which is more of a fundamental one. I was shooting outside in very moist weather and I was getting condensation inside of the camera cluster here, which is something that wasn't just isolated to me, but a bunch of reviewers that also were taking a look at this phone back in New York City. Before I continue, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building a website for your personal brand or business. With a variety of stylish templates and plenty of options for customization, making a website that is truly your own is a breeze, which makes a world of difference when you're trying to engage an audience. Perhaps you're selling products, showcasing your portfolio to prospective clients, or simply making a landing page for a project. Whatever the case, Squarespace has you covered front to back and will even help you set up a domain with just a few clicks. If you're interested in checking them out and want to support the content that we make here on Denki, head over to squarespace.com Denki. You can try out the service for free, and if you like what you see, they'll give you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and now back to the OnePlus Open. Looking past the impressive screen, battery life, the performance, and even the cameras, probably the thing that got me putting away my Fold 5 has to be the software experience. A lot of this has to do with the fact that OnePlus is actually leaning in to a lot of the developments that Google has made with Android with regards to foldables. For example, not only do you get a tablet-like dock on the bottom with your most recent apps and all of your favorite ones, but open up an app and you get a taskbar on the bottom, which is especially handy if you want to start multitasking. Of course, if you've used a Z Fold or any of Samsung's tablets over the past couple of years, all of this Android multitasking is probably not new to you, but I think it's impressive that OnePlus has included it on the open, considering that their own OnePlus tab didn't include any of this. In addition to what is already built into Android, Oxygen OS does a few more things to help optimize the experience on the OnePlus Open. For example, on the taskbar, there is a Recents button. If you hit it, you can pull up a bunch of images and documents that you can just straight up drag and drop into any of the apps that you have on your screen. So for example, I'll drag this picture of an iPhone to Notion, and I can start making a document from there. Now it isn't perfect, I couldn't just drag the photo into the document I was currently working on, so app support is kind of hit and miss in this scenario. But the fact that this is here is cool, and I'm sure that down the line there will be better optimization for apps, whether it's on the Oxygen OS side or on the developer side for the individual apps, at least in theory. When it comes to multi-window support, I think Oxygen OS does it a bit better than One UI. So I have two apps open right now, but if I want to open up a third, if I drag it to this box down here from the taskbar, it'll open up three at once, with two in focus and one on the wing. If you want to focus on the one on the wing, you just tap it, and so you can you know, easily go back and forth between three. And if you want to see all of them together, use a gesture, and while you will be losing screen real estate doing this, you can actually individually interact with them in this smaller view, which is really neat. This to me is just way more useful than the three screen partition on One UI, where some apps do get the short end of the stick and aren't as useful in a smaller resolution. Okay, so I've talked about a lot of the things that I like with the OnePlus Open, but what are some of the downsides? 
First of all, while I appreciate the aspect ratio on the cover display feeling more akin to a traditional smartphone, where the compromise lies for me is with the cover display. Read two pages of a book side by side, or start watching video on this thing, and the letterboxing is unsightly. Also, we can't talk about foldables without mentioning durability. This is OnePlus's first foldable. And while Oppo can speak for a lot of the R&D that has went into this device, it doesn't speak for how well the warranty service and repairs will go. It's still yet to be seen. The thing is, when it comes to foldables, at least from the Samsung side, a lot of the issues that people have come with the screen protector on the main display, where it'll bubble along the crease. The solution to this problem is to go to a Samsung authorized repair place to get a new screen protector installed. You can take it to Best Buy or Samsung's own first party stores, or you can even go to a third party like iBreak You Fix or just flat out send the phone to Samsung in the mail. However, with OnePlus, the procedure, at least for the screen protector replacement, is the same. They want you to send this to them to fix but that is the only option. And we don't know what that customer service is like, at least for foldables. Benefit of the doubt that they'll treat their customers good, but I don't like the risk involved, especially considering the price of the OnePlus Open. In the US, it costs $1,700, which I think for the device in a vacuum, actually isn't too bad considering that the Pixel Fold and the Fold 5 cost $1,800. But I could totally understand the sentiment of wanting to buy Samsung purely because it's actually proven. One upside here with the price is that they will straight up give you $200 off on OnePlus.com if you trade in any device in any condition. You could spill gasoline on it and burn it to a crisp and send it over and they'll still give you 200 bucks. Even better if you give them a device that actually works because they'll also give you real trade-in value on top of that. So for all intents and purposes, it's basically a $1,500 phone, though realistically it should have started at that price to begin with. But let me know, what do you think about the OnePlus Open? Shout out your comments down below. And otherwise, I'll catch you on the next episode of Denki Channel.